Do you want to know how to play Geometry Dash? Am I in a Spider-Man mask for no reason? If he answered yes to all of those questions, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play Geometry Dash and become a pro in seconds. What are you waiting for? Come on, let's go. Alright, so, step one. First of all, you're gonna need to download the game itself first. If you want the weakest experience, download the light version off of the App Store. You only get access to a few levels and the game will be totally pointless after you beat all of them. But, if you don't have enough money on you, this is your best bet. But, if you want to become the number one player super quickly, download the full version off of Steam on your computer. This is miles better than the mobile version it can handle high FPS computer monitors. Geometry Dash Lite is not available on computer by the way, however the full version is available on mobile, just not as good as the computer version, so... Once you have downloaded the game and fully installed it, you are now on to step two. Alright, so step two, now what you'll need to do is you'll need to open up Geometry Dash itself. You'll be taken to the title screen, which has three buttons, the icon selector, which is what your character will look like when playing, play button, which contains all of the main levels in the game, and the create button, which features custom user-made levels and is only available in the full version of Geometry Dash. For this tutorial, I will only be showing you how to play the main game. Playing user-made levels aren't much different unless you play the most recent levels made. Those are a different story. Once you made it to the title screen, you're already almost on your way to start playing. Alright, so step three. Now what you'll need to do is just simply press the play button in the middle. You will be redirected to this screen, which features 21 pages of levels to choose from. Unless you downloaded the light version, in which case you'd only get 13 levels before basically being advertised the full game endlessly. These levels are named based on the song they feature, which play in the background and are synced to the gameplay, making for a crazy and fun playing experience. To actually be able to progress in the game, you'll have to start fresh and start with the first level, which is called Stereo Madness. If you try to go for the last level in these pages, Finger Dash for example, you'll probably find yourself having a hard time and not getting anywhere in the game, which is not a good move. Going for Stereo Madness first is your best bet as the game has set up the first few levels as building blocks for your skill. If you follow the levels in order as you go, you will find yourself beating the hardest main levels already and will be making good progress as a player. To start the level, just hit the bar with the level name and you will be set into play. If you don't know how to play, don't worry because that is the next step. It's also the main point of this tutorial, so... Alright, so step 4 is when things get a little bit more complicated. So, to play Geometry Dash, you'll need to actually be able to understand some of its gameplay mechanics. Geometry Dash features several unique gameplay mechanics, such as jump rings, which help you perform a double jump type action, pads, which can boost you over obstacles, upside down portals, which flip your icon's gravity, mini portals which make your icon smaller and more quick when jumping, and many unique game modes your icon could transform into. Since this tutorial is only for the smaller portion of the game, this won't go over every game mode, but rather the game modes that are showcased in the light version. To jump over the obstacles, which are spikes, you'll want to tap the screen or click the mouse depending on what platform you're using to play. You can hold to keep jumping by holding on what you're using to play. Once you get the hang of these controls, you will eventually get to the part of the level where you are introduced to the ship game mode. Before you freak out, don't worry, this is a super easy game mode to control. To fly up, hold down on what you're using to play, and to fly down, just let go. Make sure you alternate between holding and letting go to fly in a nice straight line. Once you're past this ship part, it's mainly a cube and another ship part until the end of the level. If you're struggling, you can use practice mode to practice the level with checkpoints to try to get better at a certain part or game mode. This won't count as a legitimate completion, but rather a practice completion, and will ask you to beat it normally without any checkpoints. There are also secret hidden coins throughout all of the levels, which usually require you to take alternate routes to get them. These aren't required to beat the level, but will be needed later on. If you made it to step 5, congrats! You've been in the first level. However, you're not done yet, because there are still a few things I want to go over. First of all, I want to go over some more of the game modes you will come across in a brief manner. In the next level, back on track, you are introduced to the pads. Just don't touch anything and the pads will boost you over to continue the level. The main pads are the yellow pads, which give you a good boost, but there are also pink pads, which give you a tiny boost, equivalent to a normal jump, and blue pads, which flip your gravity, similar to the upside down portals. In the third level, Polar Guys, you are introduced to jump rings. Tap when you're above the ring to jump on it and you will jump off of it and back onto the ground. These jump rings also have pink and blue counterparts which do exactly what the pink and blue pads do. In the fourth level, Dry Out, you start to go upside down in a pretty complex part at first. All you have to do is to think about the controls earlier but in reverse. 
When your cube goes up onto a platform rather than jumping, you'd not touch anything to fall onto it. When your cube goes down onto a platform, you would jump onto it. And for upside down shift, you just hold to go down and let go to go up. Basically, just reverse the controls and you'll eventually get used to the upside down mode. After some levels which help you get used to the new game modes, you get introduced to the reverse game mode in the 8 level, Time Machine. All this game mode does is flip your screen so your cube is going to the left rather than to the right. Not many of the mechanics change here, but it does take time getting used to. In the 9th level, Cycles, you get introduced to the Ball game mode, the first transformation game mode since Stereo Madness, by the way. Basically, all you have to do is go up and down on platforms to progress. To go up, you tap when you're low on a platform or the ground. To go down, you tap when you're high on a platform on the ground. Pretty simple. In the 11th level, Clutter Funk, you get introduced to the mini game mode. All this game mode does is, like I previously mentioned, make you see you're smaller and more quick with your movements, rather than being a bit more slow. The only mechanics that change here are how you move in each game mode. And finally, for the last game mode we will cover in this video, the 12th level Theory of Everything features the UFO game mode. All you have to do is tap to have your UFO do a little bit of a jump in the air and let go to let the UFO fall. And then the other levels are basically just adjusting to these game modes. Obviously in the full version there are way more things to cover, but that's for another time. Now for the coins. For the coins, it's all about just going into practice mode and learning the routes for each coin. Each level has a total of 3 coins to collect and in the full version, if you collect all 3 coins in all of the main levels, you will get access to 3 levels which are the hardest difficulty level in the main levels, the demon levels. These levels are called Club Step, which you get for getting 10 coins, Theory of Everything 2, which you get for getting 20 coins, and Deadlocked, which you get for getting 30 coins. These are super hard levels which put all of your skills to the test and I would only recommend going for as your last main levels in the game after you've been all the other 18 levels. Another thing to mention is that each level completion in normal mode and practice mode, getting stars, getting coins, and other miscellaneous achievements unlocks you a new icon or color, which you can customize in the icon menu. Just hit the icon button on the main menu and you can customize your icon to be whatever you want. To select an icon, just tap on the icon you want in the slots which show the icon and you have successfully changed your icon. If you want to know how to unlock all the icons, just tap the locks and they will tell you how to unlock the icon. To change your color, just tap the color on the top to be your primary color and the color on the bottom to be your secondary color. Colors also have the locks which tell you how to unlock them. If you are on the light version, your final level will be Electroman Adventures. If you are on the full version, your final level should either be Finger Dash, Club Step, Theory of Everything 2, or Deadlocked. Once you have been all these levels, you will have successfully completed all of the main levels in the game, and you are now going to become the coolest kid in your school. Everyone will praise you for how good you are at Geometry Dash, and may even ask you for some help with being certain levels. You may have raged a lot and had terrible fails, but trust me, it was all worth it in the end. Right? And there you have it! You've successfully learned how to play Geometry Dash and become a pro in seconds, and now you're gonna be the coolest kid at your school. Everyone's gonna praise you for being the best player ever, and they are gonna love your presence at school forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And also, you can finally get back to your Burger King job and explain to your boss why you were gone for so long. For all of you Geometry Dash Lite users, you can just, you know, go and do your things and I'll go back to playing Minecraft or whatever. But for you Geometry Dash Full users, good luck. The user made levels await you. <laughs>